Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is a 19 part video series showing you how to create DRY house. Let's get started. So to start, let's open a new architecture template. So let's go here and click on new. Let's go to architecture template and then press OK. So we start off at level one. Uh, we're going, going to add grid lines first. So under architecture, we have grid lines right here, all the way to the right side top portion. So now, for, from your keyboard, you can type in GR or you could just click on this icon. So GR, let's add in the grid line in between or in the center of all of this elevation tags. So here, I'm going to create a vertical grid line. Uh, we could start at below going up because the grid bubble is at the top portion um, we can always check the bottom so that we could have the grid bubble as well but right now i just want to start off with this so click below and then click above like so so once we click that we want to make sure that this is at 90 degrees so we're going to fix this and we could just fix it by typing it 90 degrees right there so now I'm sure that this is 90 degrees um, what we could do afterwards is click on copy so under modify once you click this you will have modify right here on the end of this ribbon and then you'll be able to click on copy or type in CO so once you have the CO, so that's copy command, make sure you have multiple check so that we could just type in our dimensions and we'll be able to create all the vertical grid lines. So here I'm going to select this grid line and then I'm going to put it all the way to the right. So by doing that, this I'll be able to just type in my numbers and press enter and then I could just keep on doing that. So here I'm going to type in 3728.77 or we could just put it at 29. So I'm going to round this off. And then after that, 1572 and then 13. 96 and then 2170 so we have our vertical grid lines we have one to five press escape and then escape again now we're going to create our horizontal grid line so type in gr again and then make sure to put it in in the middle but right here what we could do is move this later on in the middle so we could just estimate it around here so once we have that what we could do is we could create it first so here's the horizontal press escape and then escape again if you notice it creates number six because revit recognized the sequence that you're trying to do so in order for us to change this to a letter, you will need to click on the grid bubble right here, double click on that, and then just type in A, capital A. And then now what we could do is I, we could just actually select everything and then just move it right in the middle position so that everything is located properly you can also use your arrow key in your keyboard once you select them all and then after that 
press escape and then escape again select grid line a co multiples multiple is already checked so once you do it once it will it will register and then it will recognize what you did and then it will just maintain that uh, multiple checked so now i'm gonna uh, drag this below and I'm going to type in 1870. Next will be 3050. Next will be 1700. 34. 31. After that, we have... one three three six and then we have two eight nine nine and then fifty six thirty so we have all of that ready and added you can now press escape and then escape multiple times um, I'm going to add dimension so that you guys can follow along. So here I'm going to click on um, dimension right here. Uh, most of the time it's ar above here, but I just put it around here so that it's visible. So now you can even type in DI. And then here I'm going to click on all of this grid lines. So as you can see, we have here, and then we add an overall afterwards. We're going to do it right here as well. That's why I gave some gap so that we could add in all the dimensions right here on this side only. And then after that, an overall. So we have all these dimensions. And you can now press escape and then escape again. Now, what you can see is we have some gaps here. And I don't want that too much gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the grid line. And as you can see, it creates this, this uh, temporary dimension that we, we have a dash line right here. That indicates that once we move this one, it will move all. So I'm going to do that on here as well. It will move. And I want to centralize everything. So I'm just going to use my arrow key to just center everything. And also, uh, I know that I'm going to work on level 1. Um, we're going to have uh, a ground as well right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on all the grid lines right here and check the grid bubble because we're going to work on level one for sure most of the time so we want everything to be checked so that once i say something we don't need to um check the day uh where where the grid line is so everything will be coordinated properly so here I have my dimension and I have my grid lines and my grid bubbles all the way around. And then now we will uh, go to our elevation in order for us to um, add our levels. So here I'm going to go to our south elevation. You can choose any elevation, but I'll choose my south elevation. And then here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put level 1 and then we could add. So level 1, I'm going to put it at around 400 because we will still have a ground. And then here, I'm going to put 3400 because I want just my level to be 3000. And then again, we could select here 
uh, and then copy and then we could add level 3 but here as you can see the issue with this is we have no level 3 on our floor plan that's because um, there are multiple ways of doing or adding levels so in this way you create a copy and from that copy uh, there's gonna be another step which is you need to go to view and then you need to go to plan views and then click floor plan and then you will see the level 3 right there so you can press OK so now it creates the level 3 and you will be able to see it in your project browser and then we have so I'm gonna undo this and I'm gonna show you another way so here you go to architecture beside the grid lines we have level so you can type in ll once you do that you'll be able to add your level similar to this and then the difference between that is this one it creates the level instantly and that's uh that's actually fast if you're um, creating a very small level um, model but if you're doing multiple levels i suggest you do the copy the copy command so it's going to be a, a lot faster so now once we have our levels you want to make sure that you stretch this all the way up because if it's not up what will happen is if you go to your level 3 those grid lines won't appear so now if we stretch it again i'll be able to show you that those levels will appear or those grid lines will appear so now let's go back to the south elevation so here i'm just going to click on the south and we're going to add ground level so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on level again and then here we're going to add the ground level and around 400. so now it's saying level four that's because of the sequence Revit recognize. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and then I'm going to look for the elbow. So basically, there's going to be this um, zigzag icon. Very small sometimes. But once you click that, you'll be able to change and um, fix so that every everything is not overlapping and also here i'm going to change the name of this to ground and then would you like to rename corresponding views i'm going to say yes so that it will change here as well and then here i want to make sure that everything is showing um, we could fix this one right here like that so that we'll be able to have everything once we have the elevation once we're go doing the um, sheets everything will be lined up and will fit onto the sheet so here we could fix this as well we could add in dimensions but we already have dimensions right here under the level but you can also add dimensions right here and then an overall so we fix the south elevation but we need to fix all of the elevation so now let's go to each and every elevation and we want to pull it up properly here it's good enough but this one needs fixing 
So I'm going to push this one right here. And then I'm going to grab this and pull it down so that it's not overlapping with that information. Let's go to North Elevation. And the same thing goes. We need to find the elbow and add that. And then we could pull this one down. And let's not forget the dimensions so that when we're doing the sheet, everything is already included. We don't need to do anything else. So it's very fast to add dimension, as you can see. And then you just need to keep on clicking. And then next will be the west elevation. And looks like everything here is good, except for this one. We need to pull this one to the right side so that we have enough space. And here we could just fix this a little bit more. Add the elbow right here. And then pull this one down and to the left. And then let's add the dimension like the others. And then here an overall. You can also add dimensions into the grid lines right here. So it's up to you if you want to add those grid lines. And as you can see, you just need to click on clicking and it will snap onto those. And then here we could just extend it a little bit more and you could grab this to pull it down and fix your dimensions. Um, let's go back to level one. And we want to make sure to add elbows to those ones that will you think that will overlap. For example, the E and F looks like um, from far away, it's overlapping. So you can add elbow as, as well and fix it like so. And then right here as well, fix it. And it will look nice. And then the last thing we're going to do before we finish the video is to save this. So here I just have the save command. You can control S and then after that, go to the location that you want to save this. I'm going to name it as MJ house. And then before you click save, what you need to do is click on option. And then in this option, it provides you a maximum backup. So the default is 20. If you're medium, intermediate, you can put it as five. And you, if you're expert, you can put it as one. So I advise around five to 10, just in case that you need to go back to a safe portion. And if there's an error occur, so might as well just put it in five and then press OK. And then once you do, you just need to save it right here. And then to check the units that we're going to use here, um, you could type in UN. And then here, this is the project parameters that we have. Uh, we're using millimeters because this is a, a metric template. Uh, and then if you want to use um, Imperial, you will need to select a architecture template that is Imperial. So um, using a project um, template, a proper project template is a must. So you want to make sure you use the proper um, template on those. So I'm going to click on OK. And thank you for watching and hope you liked the video. Please hit like and subscribe. Feel free to comment down below.